Hi, and welcome back to our third video lecture about the design process for ME1000 at the University of Utah. We've discussed how to assess and brainstorm, and today we're going to discuss compute and construct. First, to recap, in the assess phase, you must first develop the problem statement. Once this is well defined, you move on to generate objectives and constraints. You need to make sure that these cover all aspects of your problem statement. The next step is to generate functions. Note that there is not a one-to-one -one mapping of functions to objectives because you often need more than one function to accomplish each objective. For instance, if you're designing a chainsaw, you will probably have to have an objective of be safe, which will need functions of stop motor automatically, block fingers, and you could probably think of more. Once you and your team have agreed on the problem statement, objective constraints and functions, you move on to brainstorming. In this phase, you are using your creativity to come up with as many wild and wacky means of accomplishing your functions as possible. You then continue to use your creativity and your intuition to develop designs by selecting from your wide variety of means. For instance, using a morph chart. At this point, there's something you should be wondering. How do you decide which designs you need to pursue? This is where you enter the C squared phase. It is time to compute and construct. Compute refers to the mathematical model which you will use to look at many aspects of the design, including which of several design options is best, what trade-offs should be made, what parameters are the most important, the optimal values for parameters, as well as looking at size, fit, and interference of parts using a computer model on a CAD program such as SOLIDWORKS. Construct refers to a physical model such as a critical function prototype which you will use to look at other aspects of the design, such as the feasibility of proposed design components, this would be means, optimum method of achieving a critical function, and final construction techniques. These definitions have probably raised more questions in your mind, so let's look at each one in more detail. In compute, you will develop a mathematical model for some aspect of your design. You can think of this broadly as a formulation or equation that captures the essential features of the physical system or process in mathematical terms. Often, one of your design variables may be dependent on other things, such as independent design variables, fixed system parameters, or forcing functions, and you need to model these in order to obtain the desired performance. This week, we will also be discussing how to model projectile motion in class, and we'll discuss this in more detail in the next design video. Now let's discuss construct. There are three different terms we'd like you to know. The first is prototypes. These are first attempts at full-scale functioning, physically realized versions of a complete design. You would do this as a team when you've made all your design decisions and you're ready to test something out before going into full-scale manufacturing. This is distinct from what we'll call in this class critical function prototypes. These are also called proof of concept prototypes. These are prototypes of critical subsystems of a design whose behavior is unknown and which must be evaluated through tests and proven before they can be incorporated in the design. This is what you'll be working on for your upcoming lab demos. And these are distinct from what we'll call physical models, which are smaller sized versions of a design, or perhaps uh, to scale, um, or parts thereof. And physical models may or may not be functional. You might build some physical models when you want to check the interference of two different parts, for instance. All right, another note on critical function prototypes. Design is not a test. Good test taking involves doing all the parts that are easy for you and leaving the most difficult for later. This is good test taking strategy since the purpose of the test is to evaluate your knowledge and usually instructors will give you partial credit for what you complete. However, design is the opposite of a test. In design, you would better determine what the most difficult or critical problems are that you need to solve. Otherwise, you waste all of your time solving the easy problems and then when you can't solve the hard part, failure. So figure out the most important and difficult part of your design first, build a critical function prototype, uh, and make sure that works before proceeding with your design. So for selecting a design, you take your most promising ideas and develop critical function prototypes. Then you're going to evaluate the CFPs with metrics and performance specs. Metrics are essentially a testing procedure while performance specs are the desired test result. Let's reconsider the chainsaw. To evaluate whether your proposed mechanism can stop the motor automatically, your metric could be measure the time until the motor stops after the on switch is released. Your performance spec would then define the desired time, for instance, under 100 milliseconds. 
after you build your CFP, you would run a series of tests to see what the time is that is achieved by your design. If it is more than 100 milliseconds, you would know you need to re revise your design. Similarly, for block fingers, your metric could be measure the gap from the area where the hands are to the chainsaw blade with a performance spec of under three millimeters, and so on for the remaining functions. Since you were careful as designers to be sure that you had sufficient functions to achieve your objective of be safe, then once you've demonstrated that your design has met all of your performance specs, you will have achieved your objective. As you assess your problem, develop your objectives and functions, start thinking about your metrics and performance specs. You will demonstrate how your design achieves these during your lab demo in a few weeks. Bear in mind that good metrics and specs should measure the right thing with clear units, be repeatable, be cost effective, practical given your project resources, have an unambiguous interpretation, and be solution independent. Thanks and see you in class.